I didn't expect to be that blown away by it. Wow. Like, there are pieces you can play where you go, hey, this is a little bit easier, but just to play the open strings and go, whoa. Today's video is brought to you by Classical Guitar Pro. That's my brand new online classical guitar course, which is six hours, 53 videos. It's a whole curriculum designed to teach you what you would normally learn in the first six months to a year of classical guitar lessons. So if you want to learn classical guitar but are stuck uh, struggling reading music or struggling to learn the techniques, check out classicalguitar-pro.com to learn more. Hey friends, I am joined today by expert luthier Marshall Bernay. We are in his fancy new showroom. And for me, this is like a, being in a candy store. I mean, everywhere I look, there's a guitar that's even more interesting and fascinating than the next. So I'm sure we'll jam on these guitars a little bit later. But actually, we're here today because Marshall has invited me to try out some guitars, uh, but I don't really know what we're doing exactly yet. So Marshall, fill me in because I can't wait to try out whatever it is you have in store. Okay, yeah. Uh, I was looking at a lot of the comments from the Rob Scallon video that we did together. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, this guitar is worth $275,000 video. And there was a lot of comments saying, I can't hear the difference. Mm. So I called you over to see if we can hear the difference okay. between a $200 guitar, $2,000 guitar, mm -hmm. $20,000 guitar, there we go. and $200,000 guitar. I hope we can hear the difference. <laughs> Why not? Absolutely. As a whole, we generally price graded off of the acoustics hmm. but this is one where you at home will probably want to listen to it on a good set of he headphones uh, don't just grab your your aliexpress earbuds yeah i think one apple earbud for this video is probably not going to cut it uh, <laughs> do two do two <laughs> stereo is always a good idea uh, okay well that sounds fascinating yeah i can't, oh, can't yeah. wait to shout these instruments let's start off with a 200 hundred dollar guitar okay that sounds good right, here it is Oof, <laughs> that's <laughs> the appropriate way to pick up a two hundred dollar guitar, probably. Right, we Look treat everything with respect. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, this is a Protege by Cordoba. It's a C one. Oh, okay, no Cordoba. Uh, you know, it's for for the money. It's actually a reasonably okay place to start. This one was used as a uh, walking guitar. Well, and they did it in style with this color. This is oh yeah, very... it's uh, this accessorizes well with everything. It goes with your shirt and exactly. mine. Can't go wrong. It's a bold fashion statement. Well, it's bold something. It's, that's right. And we got a maple bridge, a not stained maple fretboard. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, you know, I used to work at a guitar shop, and this is kind of similar to the ones that some of the ones that we used to sell around the same price range. I noticed they're by different companies, but pretty similar. You know, laminate tops. Yep. Um, and uh, very heavy. Yeah, very inexpensive sides and backs. Overbuilt. Uh, you oh. know, it's built to be a durable guitar. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm excited. Just let's let's see how this thing uh, plays. Oof. So right off the bat, a bit uh, a bit buzzy, uh, but that's something we can we can fix, no? Yeah, this guitar has a truss rod in it, and I think looking down the yeah, it does. A truss rod is a, a a metal rod that goes inside the neck, which you can adjust to change the the angle of the neck. Yeah, well, uh, to put relief into the fingerboard. Oh, okay. So Thanks. it should not be used to adjust the action, gotcha. but uh, to use to adjust the curvature of the fingerboard mm. so that way it doesn't buzz. Uh, this one looks like it was pulled into a dead straight line. Yeah, the neck is like completely flat. Yeah. Which we don't want, right? We want a little bit of relief. Right. You want the surface of the neck to mimic the envelope of movement of the string because it moves more here at the 12th fret than it does at the nut or the saddle. Oh wow, but this thing is dead, dead flat. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it makes Mid-America look rather uh, geographically interesting, or geologically interesting. Well, Unless let's... you live there, then it's beautiful. That's right. Let's hear a little bit of how this thing plays here. I'll play some, uh, some Mozart variations by Soar. <laughs> Trying to get over the buzz. So right off the bat, uh, my impression is that the sound sounds, it sounds a bit like this, you know, it's like uh, this, the resonance is really not making it out of the instrument. It sounds a bit trapped. Yeah, it's like a guitar with a head cold. Yeah, exactly. 
know, is it because of the laminate body or the laminate top you think or yeah the the top is probably a very inexpensive well most likely an inexpensive piece of wood mm. uh, sandwiched with another inexpensive piece of wood in between with a very inexpensive piece of wood on the inside right uh, probably not the best quality materials and chances are the interior is highly overbuilt okay. uh, for durability not for sound Interesting. You know, as we go through all these different guitars today, I was thinking, what's my criteria? How do I actually judge a good guitar? And for me, I think it's very f important that first and foremost, the guitar is really easy to play. It's so playability is like, got to be my, my first thing. If, if it's a cheap guitar, but I can really play it, then at least I can, I can make music on it. If it's fighting me and I can't do what I want to do, then it's just like, I, I don't care how you know, famous the guitar is, I don't want to play it. Yeah. So playability is one thing. Then I think about you know the overall timbre of the instrument. You have guitars which are basser. You have guitars which are brighter. Um, then there's resonance. How how much vibration is going on with the instrument? Is it totally dead like this one? <laughs> it's just like nothing's really happening. It sounds like it's kind of trapped. I like that. It sounds like it has a, a head cold. I guess with this one, I mean my my first reaction is actually the playability is not so bad. The action isn't too high. I can play it, but I really feel like it's it's not doing anything for me. It's like a it just sounds totally flat. The sound is not going anywhere. The sustain, let's test, let's test it out. It's not terrible, actually. No. But there's no resonance behind it. There's no like sympathetic resonation going in. It's all like... It, it's all know. the fundamental. Yeah. There's no overtone. Exactly right, which is what we want. <laughs> so later I'll be testing it out with a piece by Barrios. And this one doesn't sound so great. Later on in this video, we're actually going to do a uh, just a back-to-back -back performance. I'll play a few pieces and we'll hear each one right in a row so you can really test what's the difference. But, but first, I want to see what each you know, instrument you prepared feels like here. So, all right, I think I think we have a good impression here already. We don't need to spend too much more time with a $200 guitar. No, this one's already beaten like a horse. Yeah, all right, let's toss it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one down. So, here's our $2,000 guitar. Okay. It's a Francisco Flato. Mm. There is absolutely no relation to the Flatas. I was going to ask you, I thought Flato was kind of a famous name. It is a famous name. Okay. But not Francisco. Okay. There never was, and you know, if the Flatas are smart, there probably should never be a Francisco. Okay. Because you don't want to get mixed up with this. Okay. This is an anonymous Japanese-made guitar. Okay. Imported by a... Um, a gentleman who had a creative streak with the naming of guitars for giving them very similar to famous names. Okay, so getting a little sketchy. <laughs> right. Uh, this one has a laminated sides and back, mm. but a solid top. Uh, it's actually, it's it's a nice guitar. It, yep. it, it sounds, for, for the price point, it actually sounds pretty good. It looks pretty too. Uh, you know, it's got... The exterior woods are really nice. Mm. Uh, the finish on it is reasonably good. Uh, the The top on it is a nice high quality spruce top. Uh, despite the color, it's actually been sprayed over pretty heavily, but it is a spruce, oh. not a cedar. Okay. Well, so. I'm excited to test this thing out here. Uh, well, this now, I, I feel like I'm really playing a classical guitar at least. I, just holding it and looking at it, it's like, okay, this this looks and feels like a classical guitar. The first one is kind of a toy, you know? Right, I mean, if it's the difference between uh, not playing the guitar and playing a guitar, I'd rather have that $200 guitar yeah. than nothing. Yeah, yeah. If I can afford more, I'd rather have something more. Yeah. Well, let's let's hear it. I'm, I'm curious here. I'll, I'll actually get set up to play it properly when I, when I play all the pieces back to back, but just to get a feel for it, let's see what it's like. I'll play the same sore uh, variation. <laughs> There's some resonance, at least. I hear, you know, something that really responds instantly. That really sounds like a guitar. <laughs> Especially after the $200 one, no? Yeah, it's got that nice resonance. Mm. It has a blend of tone colors mm. that are accessible. Yes. The Not thick nearly. bass, but yeah. also the clarity on top. That $200 guitar really had no resonance on bottom. No, it, it, it didn't really have resonance on the bottom. It didn't really have resonance on the top. And it didn't have too much in the middle either. <laughs> other here, than that, it's great. Other than that. But here. 
I really feel like the instrument, when I pluck, I, I feel the vibration against my chest and I go woof. So already at $2,000, we really have something that sounds like a real, uh, I mean, we're getting now where we can make some art, you know? Oh, absolutely. I, there are a lot of people in schools and performing who play on instruments of this caliber. Yeah. You know, this is kind of, if you want to classify it as a concert quality instrument, mm. this is kind of the very, very beginnings of a concert quality instrument. Right. I, I, I don't think that there's anybody who would play it full time as their concert instrument. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to be playing a wedding outdoors or something like that where, you know, Uncle Larry is going to drop some wine on your guitar, this is really <laughs> not a bad place to be. You know, I as mean, a concert quality instrument. For years, I played, and when I was in college, my instrument was actually been a bit cheaper than this one. Uh, and I learned on it, and I survived, and I, and I fell in love with classical guitar music. You know, I think we just need an instrument that doesn't block us at every turn. It doesn't fight us at every musical moment. And, and, and especially an instrument that has good playability. Because if the action's too high, you're just going to be uh, developing tension, unnecessary tension. So for me, again, playability is the most important thing. Everything else is extra, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, I remember your guitar very well. Mm. And, you know, this is definitely a step up from where you started out as mm. and where I saw you progress uh, in your earlier years. Oh, yeah. We've known each other forever. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, my first guitar was uh, something I bought at Guitar Center. It was very shiny. It looked like it was sprayed by uh, 10 different layers of shellac. And then uh, they went over to a couple more. A couple more, probably. So I could see my face, and I remember thinking, like, oh, this is a good guitar. It's, like, super shiny. It had Mother of Pearl everywhere. Yep. So I mistook the beautiful look uh, for a good guitar. And it was also very high. So, you know, high, it must mean just good, right? Right, of course. <laughs> so be careful. Uh, don't be, you know, um, swayed by a beautiful looking instrument. It's got to sound good and feel good, most importantly. And this one, I do. I really like the sound. So, I mean, in the, the $2,000 range, I mean, this thing... Actually, like you say, I think you could go through college degrees and even play some uh, professional gigs on this, and, and you can make good music. Oh, absolutely. It, this is a fine musical piece. If you only have $2,000, this is a really great place to be. Uh, you can get a new guitar for, you know, that's maybe not quite as good for right around the same price. Mm. But this one actually is musical. Mm. I was just also getting lost in this beautiful... Um, these beautiful like wooden pegs and actually some kind of nice designs here and the machine heads too. So it's got it's got its uh, you know charm. This guitar. Uh, I wonder if uh, maybe I was thinking since it has this nice bass range, I was thinking of taking it down to drop D and hearing some um, your bass. I yes. think the timbre is really lovely, but uh, playability-wise, because that action, I'm not having a good time because it's, uh, especially when I got up here, everything is too difficult, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, this also has a very old-style setup, oh, yeah? and it can be changed, mm. although at a guitar at this price point, it's not necessarily worth the work that goes into it, and we highly often recommend putting those resources to a better allocation. That makes sense. More expensive guitar. <laughs> That's right. Cool. Okay, well, I, I, I do dig the sound of this one, and later on we'll hear, again, more pieces on each one, but uh, I'm very interested. If this is what $2,000 feels like, the 200 to 2000 was a huge change. I'm very curious now, what does a $20,000 guitar feel like? A guitar. A guitar. Oh, what? It's not a bass or something? <laughs> well, we'll get Davey in here for Yeah, okay, Davey 504 will have to <laughs> let us know. <laughs> All right, so, at 20000 this is... An Art E. Brunet 37 Hauser copy. He hasn't done too many of these. Oh, wow. Uh, so your dad made this? Yeah, my dad made this. The 37 Hauser, this is based off of the iconic guitar that Segovia played. Right. And uh, he's the only person who has made drawings of that 37 Hauser. So anybody who offers a 37 Hauser, they're all built off of the plans that my father drew. Wow. So... 
uh, here it is. Looks beautiful. It's a beautiful guitar. It's got Brazilian rosewood sides and back. Oh yeah, uh, wow. It's got a bear claw spruce. I, I tell you, wood like that just doesn't grow on trees anymore. <laughs> I love the top. This oh, is yeah. so beautiful. Would you call it bear claw? Yeah, this is called bear claw or Hasselfichta, uh, if you're German. Hasselfichta. Yeah. Hassel is in bear and fichta is okay. fichta. Genau. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastisch. Wow. Well, I'm now I'm very excited to play it. I didn't know I was going to play one of your dad's. You know, like a few notes and the quality difference for me, I'm not sure how much of that is coming across, but the feel of it, the timbre, the ease of playing is really uh, a night and day. It's got a lot of overtones. Yeah, this... that, that's exactly right. Listen to that sustain also. Gorgeous, it's still going. Yeah. You know, this... just, we'll just wait. Yeah, we can... <laughs> you want to go grab lunch while it's, it yeah, does yeah, its yeah. thing? And... I saw a pizza Rio. Yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Let me try that, that Mozart variation thing, because that, uh, uh, we'll hear a little bit on each instrument. Beautiful. Even at like pianissimo. It's like super clear. It's precise. Yeah. Wow. It's, this is what I meant when I talked about guitars that do half the playing for you. I mean... this I know is not is hard to come across on on a recording but I can tell you with my experience playing lots of different guitars the jump from the last guitar to this guitar might not be as objective over uh, by audio but the feel is as much difference as from the 200 to 2000 well they say that the first five thousand dollars is for the audience and everything <laughs> after that is for the player that makes sense but it, and it does it, it makes perfect <laughs> sense with that uh, everything beyond that translates a lot or not everything but a lot of it afterwards translates into the response into the player which allows a player exactly. to express their exactly musical right. thoughts a lot easier exactly it frees up mental bandwidth so that way when you are playing something like this you don't have to worry about is my finger going to be in the right place how yeah. hard do i have to have to hit this note it becomes instinctive it, it becomes an extension of you well said that's exactly my experience uh and uh, the freer you are in that moment on stage to then just let the intentions flow from your mind to the audience's ears. Yeah. You know, all the mediums. This is just a tool, right? At the end of the it day, is. these are tools. It They're is. beautiful tools. But we want the tool to be as invisible as possible. We want the immediacy of the intention to reach the audience uninhibited, you know? And I yes. feel like when I have good guitars like this, that's what's happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's just, I think you said it very nicely. Let's check the, the sustain up here. So what I love about this guitar is, compared to the first guitar, is we hear the fundamental, the actual note you're perceiving, but after we hear that, we get all this extra overtones here. Check this out. So the fundamental's gone, but I still hear this halo of overtones that it's sympathetic resonation, right? Yeah, well, you, yeah, exactly. You get this beautiful evolution of sound as it transitions from the fundamental because when you're dealing in that range and that mm. octave, mm. the fundamental goes away fairly quickly yeah. as you heard on the $200 guitar. Exactly. I mean, that thing is all fundamental. Yeah. And it goes, tink! <laughs> and it, it's got the grace of dropping a wrench onto a piece of concrete. Uh, this one, it, it has this evolution of sound yeah. where it goes, it transitions from fundamental exactly. to overtones, and then all the overtones 
flow in around to support the note that isn't there exactly. in a way that enhances the non-existent. Well said. I think we, we can isolate this and make it more obvious if you're having a hard time hearing it. I'll play the E, then I'll, I'll immediately stop the fundamental. So everything you're hearing after I stop the note is all extra overtones. So all of that is just what's ringing. It's the overtones we're hearing. It's just a beautiful sound. It's gorgeous. It's incredible. Yeah. So that's what's happening all the time when you're playing. You produce different overtones depending on where you are. And so you have this background halo around all the notes you're playing that are producing those sounds. This is a really incredible instrument. I'm looking forward to trying it out uh, back to back with all these uh, the pieces at the end here. Oh, uh, yeah. But let's just, let's talk a bit more now about uh, about our last guitar because you know two hundred dollars dollars twenty thousand dollars that's already pretty extreme. I, I haven't I haven't bought a twenty thousand dollars instrument before, but yeah, two hundred thousand yet. <laughs> Actually, is this one on sale? <laughs> For you, I'll throw in a case. Oh. All of our guitars come with cases. I'll do it if you throw in a capo. You got it. Okay, sold. <laughs> I mean, it's just a work of art, you know? And same with your instruments uh, that you've made, that the recent instruments you've, that I've seen you make, I mean, are of the same quality. It's just, they're, it's really incredible to, to look at and to, and to play, Marshall. So oh, thank you. Thank you for, for letting me play this one. Now yeah, I don't even know, how, how can you get better than this? I'm so interested to see what this is. Well, let's add a zero and go from there. <laughs> no so, big deal, let's add a zero. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from a bench copy of a 37 Hauser to an actual 1936 Hauser. Wow. Okay, well. So we're gonna go from <laughs> our modern exact copy to the real deal. Let's do it. All right. So, we have the next guitar. $200,000. Ready. You ready? 1936 Hauser. That's beautiful. I mean, this is, this is the guitar. It's got a few scratches on the back. Uh, As my uh, old boss used to say, that's just character. Right, yeah. <laughs> th those are love, love bites. Exactly. Uh, and it's got uh, two cracks on it. Oh, okay. And that's it. Uh, they've been expertly repaired. Uh, minor, minor playing wear. Uh, this is pretty close to as pristine as you can get. I've had a couple without the cracks, and they're yeah. obviously a bit more expensive because... You know, at this point, we're grading based off of structural condition and, and basically it's cumulative life up to this point. Interesting. So this is not the most perfect one I've had, mm. but it's really, really, really close. It's really good. Oh, man. Super excited to play this. It's light. It is. But it's actually not all that far off from the other guitars in terms of, of the weight, but what you're feeling is... The balance of the guitar. Oh, interesting. It's it's a north, south, uh, east, west balance. Right. And <laughs> when you put it up to your chest, you'll actually notice that it settles into your body. It doesn't want to fall away from you it. You are right. And when it's up properly, the weight tends to disappear off of them. That's incredible. I've never experienced that before. I was also just enjoying the. I, I know this name, Herman Hauser. I, I, I you know. I know about the Luthier, just to see the original label is also a beautiful thing. Herman Hauser, Guitar in München. <laughs> Incredible, 1936. Wow. Um, well, let's see if we're in tune. Ooh, sweet sounding E. Okay, so just in tuning this thing, <laughs> I'm kind of blown away. I didn't expect to be that blown away by it. Wow. Like, um, you know, there are pieces you can play where you go, hey, this is a little bit easier, but just to play the open strings and go, whoa. Yeah, and beyond that, you know, this is, with this guitar, you can actually hear the guitars behind us resonating <laughs> with it. And that's because the way that he built, he created this inertia of sound. They're not loud guitars. Yeah, it doesn't strike it's super loud, yeah. But wow. there's this energy and constant push behind the sound yeah. it's got that 
clarity of your dad's guitar, but with a different feel. That's wisdom. <laughs> I think the thing about that I'm really feeling with this is like, like we were saying that playability thing. It's like I I feel like I'm doing maybe 25% of the work I was doing with that $200 guitar. Yeah. So th that's the main reason uh, I, I the main thing I look for in a guitar. But I mean, obviously I'm not gonna be buying a $200,000 guitar anytime soon. But I mean, wow, the the difference is again night and day. Let's try that uh, your bet piece again. I'm really interested to hear what it sounds like in drop D. I feel like it's asking me to play it softer, more, more dolce. Well, there's a reason why Yobad played on a Hauser. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, it was like a homecoming for that piece. So, you know, this is history. This is beyond just a musical instrument. There are no more Hauser ones being made, and there haven't been for a long time. Yeah. There can only be less of these. Right. You know? Hence the value. Right. Well, I could just keep playing these instruments, but I'm so ready to play them back to back so you guys can get a chance to really hear uh, you know, the same pieces back to back and how they, how they sound. So get your headphones ready if you can. Uh, I want to thank you, Marshall, for uh, setting me up with these beautiful guitarists to try out today. And uh, is there anything that you wanted to mention to, to my uh, channel? Absolutely. My pleasure, and thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, uh, please feel free to visit me, mebrunet.com. Uh, you can call me, visit me. Uh, I make guitars, I'm sure, as you've seen elsewhere. Very good guitars. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, there I'll have a promo code of Brandon on my website, and I'll give you $500 off of a deposit for a guitar. Oh. Uh, so feel free to take advantage of that, uh, and uh, just come on by. Give us a call. We're happy to share these instruments with you at any time as well. You know, there's a lot more that we haven't touched on, and... You know, whatever your budget is, uh, we'll help you find something great. We'll leave a link in the bio so you can check out his website. Well, thanks, Marshall. My pleasure. Thanks, Brandon. All right, let's get to playing.